What does happiness mean to you? Because if you're born after the 2000s, the only thing that matters about life is that you're happy. As a young kid, I've heard that word so many times that I can't count. In movies, music, in books, everywhere. It sounded like everyone had been programmed to say it. Even if the vast majority didn't look like they were enjoying their lives very much. And I've never felt that way regarding happiness. In fact, I highly question it. But if the goal isn't to be happy, then what if happiness is just what it actually is, the state of being happy? And here's what I've learned about happiness, chasing it, and studying it in psychology. Have you ever considered that happiness might be just a clever marketing tactic, a strategy, a social construct designed for the masses? In Western cultures especially, happiness is conceived as this constant state of joy, almost like euphoria. And it's only attainable once you've checked all the boxes in your life. You know, I used to buy into this narrative that you have to land the job, find a wife, buy the car, build the house, get the dog. And when you did, there you go, lifelong happiness, and it's guaranteed somehow. But this model is an oversimplification to the extreme. It's a one-size-fits-all approach that makes little sense when you truly think about it. Also, this is based on the assumption that most people want the same thing out of their lives. And this may be true to some extent, but people that have a different perspective on life aren't going to relate to that vision. So I think that this part needs a disclaimer first, uh, because this is going to be kind of pessimistic. But don't worry, it's just to prove a point and it's going to be more nuanced after that. So navigating through life, I always believed that seeking for happiness would inevitably lead me happy somehow. And if that makes sense on paper, it doesn't in reality. Because I was wrong on so many different levels. Um, and understanding the true nature of happiness here is key. It's defined as the state of being happy. And as a state, by nature, it can only be temporary. We're being sold a generalized version of a temporary feeling that fails to accommodate to individual nuances and people's personal goals. And at this point, I realized that society was selling a Disney narrative to lost people addicted to hope, including myself at the time. Because it's tempting to believe in a utopia where school plus job plus house leads to ultimate reward of constant joy and fulfillment by the time you're 30. However, this is a fantasy. As appealing as it may sound, Blaming society for this idea would be as useful as turning to astrology for life advice. I don't have anything against astrology, but you get the idea. To understand this, we must first define what a happy life looks like. And if you're anything like me, you've probably looked around and started comparing yourself to others. The problem in today's world is that this comparison isn't limited to your immediate surroundings. It has become global. Because a century ago, you'd compare yourself to the other villagers and people um, within your own village or city. Now, because of the accessibility to the information, the scope for comparison has become boundless. And this isn't sane for our brains. Uh, it's not their normal way that we're meant to function. Don't get me wrong. Social comparisons, when done right, are both useful and necessary. It allows us to look at others, particularly those within our circle, and identify key areas where we might need improvement in order to become better versions of ourselves. To make these comparisons beneficial, we need to be able to identify the full context and to analyze every detail in order to extract the right insight from it. This is doable when you compare yourself to one to two person, but this is completely impossible to do when you're handling hundreds of comparisons on a screen, on an daily basis. Also, because we can only feel the depth of our own emotions, we can't really know what happiness looks like in the heads of others. And this is the problem with human perception at large. We only have our own feelings to compare it to. And that can lead us to believe that others are always happier than we are, when in fact you can't possibly know if they are. And I personally went down what I call the black hole of happiness. This is where trying to be happy leads you to feel the opposite, unhappy. And it happened when I started to really want to work hard on myself. I wanted to build the skills, enhance my productivity, um, thinking that it would make me, you know, a lot of money, the car, the job, whatever. 
Therefore, I would be a happy man because that's the goal, right? So I began consuming a lot of content about self-improvement. A lot of it, maybe too much at once, actually. But like I suppose most people do when they fall into the trap. This pursuit quickly backfired due to the inevitable tendency for social comparisons that I have. After learning how to build business, branding, marketing, and everything in order to be able to make 10k per month in less than three weeks, I surprisingly felt worse after being exposed to all of this content. The reason is simple. I was comparing my life against those, you know, those 17 year old crypto millionaires, telling myself that if I wasn't rich at 20, it was because I wasn't good or smart enough somehow. But the reality is much more intricate than this superficial bias comparison suggests. And that's when I've realized that happiness is bullshit. Because the more you chase it, the less you can attain it. Happiness is like a butterfly. If you chase it, it's going to fly away. But if you sit still and wait enough, it may just land on your shoulder. This is a cute little metaphor to say that happiness happens as a result of our actions, not as a result of the chase itself. And if there is one thing that psychology has taught me is that humans are never stable. They're dynamic and they're always trying to balance themselves. In biology, it's called homeostasis and it's the tendency to maintain a consistent state. But if we apply the same logic to feelings, trying hard to be happy all the time will dysregulate the process and uneven the balance. You know, it's like you have this birthday of someone you really care about that's coming up and you tell yourself that you're going to make their they look perfect. Um, you put some pressure on yourself that you end up screwing the cake and the party. That's what happens because remember that perfection is the enemy of good. At that point, I was caught up in a never-ending pursuit of happiness, a state which is not designed to be permanent, as we've seen. I was thinking that I should feel good all the time, and I ended up feeling inadequate because I wasn't happy enough. And in my mind, being unhappy meant that I was somehow failing at life, and it was so persistent that it created tremendous anxiety. As I started to dive deeper into the science of it, I found out that happiness is significantly influenced by hormones and neurochemicals. So I started to conceptualize it like this. Happiness isn't magical. Like all emotions, it's supposed to only be temporary. When you're happy, your brain is triggered in a certain way. Neurochemicals are being released into the bloodstream and the brain, mostly dopamine and serotonin, which explain the calm feeling of pleasure, um, the sense of joy. About homeostasis, the thing is that it's constantly adjusting. This means that if we're frequently happy, our bodies adapt, requiring a greater stimulation for the same level of happiness next time. It's like you're building tolerance for happiness in a way. I'm not biologically built to be happy all the time. Um, this was such a relief for me. It made me understand that this was a human thing and not everything was about me and the way I function. But it also made me wonder if chasing happiness doesn't work and we're not built to be happy 24 seven, then what are we supposed to do? Because if there's a universal truth about humans is that they're always chasing for something. So I begin to wonder and think about it. What if we screwed up the semantic and happiness has never been what we've been looking for? What if the idea of happiness that's being sold isn't the right one? There could be something much greater in life, something that's personal, persistent, something that is meaningful at all times. And while Disney choose happiness, what I'm looking for now is purpose. Purpose is the reason for which something exists or has been created. Searching for why I'm here makes way more sense to me than seeking fleeing joy. And it was an eye opener for me. Uh, this realization relieved me from the pressure because happy or unhappy, purpose retains its significance, regardless of our emotional states, making it the only truly viable option to follow. Happiness as sold by society is an elusive concept, not the universal solution it's made out to be. Our lives are unique and happiness derived from social comparisons is fundamentally flawed. I choose to believe that happiness is just a positive emotional state and that's it. It's an outcome, it's a byproduct of their circumstances, but it was never meant to be the primary objective. 
And while feeling happy is undeniably positive, pursuing happiness is never my goal. And looking for purpose is what makes my time here meaningful. If you had to take anything out of this video, here it is in simple bullet points. Happiness is a social construct, a utopia where you feel happy all the time if you do or buy the right things. Happiness is the difference between life as it is and how life should be, and it's measured through social comparisons. The more you chase happiness, the less you can attain it. Happiness is neurologically driven and it's largely influenced by hormones and neurochemicals. Happiness is an outcome, not a goal. Seek for a purpose. Purpose is never going to fade away and happiness will follow eventually. I hope this helps and you'll find me here if you need it. In the meantime, trust the process.